There's plenty of packing lists of things you should bring on a cruise, but today I've got things you should absolutely not bring on a cruise up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RollCreamingBlog.com. I know it, packing is stressful because you just don't want to forget anything, but there are some things you shouldn't bring on a cruise. And the first thing I thought of not to bring on a cruise are towels. You really don't need them because Royal Caribbean provides towels for you. I think the issue here is people think they need towels for their excursions to bring to the beach, but Royal Caribbean provides towels for you to use not only on board at ships, but also in the ports that you'll be visiting. You can take as many out as you need to, just return them by the end of the cruise to avoid a fee, but you don't need to bring your own towels because it's just going to take up way too much space. Yeah, maybe you have an awesome towel that you brought from home, but all that extra space required for a towel is not really necessary, and Royal Caribbean towels are more than enough. Number two is you don't need to change money, so don't bring any other currency other than probably U.S. dollars. Depending on the cruise destination, bringing local currency is just frankly unnecessary. Many popular cruise ports accept U.S. dollars, especially anywhere in the Caribbean. With so many visitors these days from the United States, everybody takes U.S. dollars. So if you're going to Nassau, you don't need to even bother exchanging currency even if you wanted to because U.S. dollars and Bohemian dollars are a one-to-one -one ratio. If you're visiting Mexico or anywhere else, again, you could change it to pesos, but it's really not worth it. Now, to be fair, yes, you could get a better exchange rate using pesos compared to U.S. dollars, but the difference is so minuscule in my opinion, you're just wasting your time. Now, of course, if you need larger sums or you don't feel comfortable using cash, you could use credit cards, but it is important if you're using a credit card in a foreign country to make sure your credit card doesn't have foreign transaction fees. Plus, a lot of establishments and cruise ports will accept credit card payments, especially restaurants and shops, although it is fair to mention that if you're an American, American Express usually isn't nearly as widely accepted as Visa or MasterCard, ditto for Discover. And the other advantage of using credit cards over cash in any of the ports you're visiting is that you don't have to worry about carrying a lot of cash on you. If you lose your credit card, the liability is far less than, of course, if you lose your cash. Next up are snacks. Now, in most situations, you don't need to pack snacks on a Royal Caribbean cruise. It's no surprise that there's an abundance of food on board your ship, so you really don't need to bring your own pretzels, trail mix, and candy from home. Now, if you're looking to have a snack on a short excursion, consider taking a few extra cookies from the buffet, placing them in the Ziploc bag, or you could order the snack-sized boxes of cereal from room service at no additional cost, and these make a great snack option while in port. Now, I will amend one thing, which is one of my favorite tips for kids, if you have younger children, it's not a terrible idea to have a snack in the cabin that you bring from home, like goldfish or Cheez-Its. But if you're not traveling with kids, it's probably worth it just to leave the granola bars and fruit snacks back at home. Next up is valuable jewelry. And listen, I'm all about the sparkly, right? And I get it that you want to look your best on a cruise, but it's probably a good idea to leave your most expensive items at home or only wear them while on board. Now, it's pretty unlikely that anything will happen to your jewelry on a Royal Caribbean cruise, but if you're wearing them in port, it may draw unwanted attention to yourself and your travel party. Frankly, this is all about risk management. The next thing on my list that you should definitely leave at home is that bulky stroller. If you got younger kids, you're going to want to bring your stroller because, you know, there's going to be opportunities for the kids to be able to take a nap and just take a rest in there, especially during shore excursions. But bulky strollers, the one that can do everything, yeah, those aren't really a good idea because... Cruise ships are confined spaces. It can be really tough to navigate the ship with a really large stroller. Plus, taking a bulky stroller into port can be complicated, and many cruise ports have very narrow and uneven sidewalks that make pushing a stroller very difficult. In addition, where are you going to put it in your cabin? In a lot of cases, it's going to take up valuable space. So instead, what you want to do is not to leave a stroller completely at home, but bring an umbrella stroller instead. You know, those cheap umbrella strollers are great because they pack down easily and they're much more lightweight, which makes travel with them a breeze. Now, Royal Caribbean doesn't provide strollers for you, but in my opinion, when we had kids that young, we would get an umbrella stroller that was really cheap, use it on board the ship and in the ports we were visiting, and then you know what? If we didn't like it, we could always toss it because it was very inexpensive to begin with. Next up is the computer, and packing a laptop for your cruise, well, I do that, but I think for most people, it's probably overkill. While some travelers think they may want their computer to check emails and connect with friends and family on board, Bringing a laptop is really an unnecessary hassle. Instead, you can really use your phone these days for any technology needs on board, from checking into a flight to researching ports of call. Now, of course, it does require a smartphone, so if you don't have that, you may be out of luck. But if you got a smartphone, it's probably more than enough that you need for computing while on a cruise. 
Next on my list are brand new shoes. Now, a pre-cruise shopping trip is a lot of fun, and we do this a lot, actually, in our family, but you might want to rethink those brand new shoes for a cruise ship vacation. All the cruising is relaxing. It does involve a lot of walking, and no one wants to deal with painful blisters on vacation. So if you buy new shoes for a cruise, be sure to wear them a few times at home and work them in, right? Don't just bring a literal brand new pair of shoes on board the ship. Doing this will help ensure you break the shoes in properly before your trip, and it can alleviate the risk of blisters feeling uncomfortable on your vacation. It's a much better idea to really bring a pack of shoes you're confident will be comfortable throughout the sailing. After all, no one knows if you've worn those pair of shoes 200 times before, so bring your trusty pair of sandals as opposed to a new pair. The next thing on my list, I'm sure we'll get some comments down below, but you know what? I feel confident about this. Walkie talkies. Not only are walkie talkies unnecessary to pack from a communication standpoint, they are really annoying to other guests. Plus, walkie talkies don't work very well on board as the metal walls of that cruise ships are built with can provide some significant interference. Instead of bringing walkie talkies, use the Royal Caribbean app. Royal Caribbean's app has a complimentary chat feature where you can message others in your travel party. And communicating via the Royal Caribbean app works much better than walkie talkies. And it's now completely free to use even if you don't have a Wi-Fi package on the cruise. If you remember the Inside Hacks video we did in which I shared some of the best inside cabin hacks for on a Royal Caribbean cruise, well, this next one is one that I tried and I think it's still not worth it. And that is the over the door shoe organizer. Now, if you read a lot of articles or even videos that I've done here about inside cabin hacks, people talk about an over the door shoe organizer to help provide extra storage space in your cabin. Many cruisers like to bring these to not only store shoes, but toiletries, snacks, and other accessories. Now, when we tried it on a recent cruise, I just thought it was more of a hassle than it was worth. Yes, you can fit many more items in the organizer's spacious pockets, but I really didn't feel the extra storage space was necessary. Most Royal Caribbean cabins, especially those on newer ships, have more than enough storage space in the room. I think this hack is really based on older ships from a previous generation. We're talking like more than 20 years ago. So I think it may have made sense back then, but today, eh, not so much. Most Royal Caribbean cabins, especially those on newer ships, have more than enough storage space. In fact, oftentimes there's more storage than you'll actually need. So wasting space with an over-the-door shoe organizer isn't needed. And of course, you're going to spend, you know, a dollar or two to pick one up. So save that money for something else. Now, this next item on my list, I know my wife will disagree with, but maybe there's some ladies out there who actually are okay with it, and that is a hair dryer. All Royal Caribbean cabins are equipped with a hair dryer, so in most cases, there's no need to pack one. For most people, a hair dryer will take up too much luggage space and isn't worth the trouble. However, if your hair requires careful styling, you may want to consider bringing your own hair dryer, and you can find several travel-sized hair dryers on Amazon, which may work well for those with limited luggage space. Next up are flowy dresses. So you found the most chic dress for your cruise and can't wait to wear it on board. The only problem, the outdoor decks on cruise ships can be very windy and you definitely don't want to put your underwear on display for everybody on board. No need to replicate that famous scene with Marilyn Monroe. Before packing short, flowy dresses, it's always important to understand that there's a strong possibility these dresses will fly up in the wind. While you certainly can still pack flowy dresses, bring a pair of shorts to wear under your dress or just simply avoid windy outdoor decks while wearing them indoors, totally fine. But outside, yeah, you might be putting on a show. So think about that first. Next up, of course, is something that Royal Caribbean says you shouldn't bring, which are prohibited items. Now, we've discussed items you don't need to bring on a cruise, but let's move on to items you can't bring on a cruise. Like all cruise lines, Royal Caribbean has a list of prohibited items. If you bring a prohibited item on a cruise, the item will be confiscated at the cruise terminal, and you can pick it up once you pass through the terminal on disembarkation day. Now, here's a list of the most common prohibited items that people try to bring on a cruise, but you can't bring on it. So don't even bother. Number one, a clothing iron. Clothing irons pose a fire hazard and are prohibited on a Royal Caribbean cruise. Unfortunately, this means your clothes may sport more wrinkles than you'd prefer if you were going on your sailing. But Royal Caribbean does offer dry cleaning and pressing services, and it does cost extra. You can expect to pay around $6.99 to have a long sleeve shirt dry cleaned and pressed and $13.99 for a dress. Alternatively, you could pack wrinkle release spray for your cruise, which may help to remove unwanted wrinkles in your outfits. Something else you can't bring on a cruise are pool floaties. While pizza and unicorn shape pool floaties are all the rage on Instagram, they're not allowed on a Royal Caribbean cruise. Inner tubes, pool noodles, floating mats, and other floating devices are not permitted in the pools on Royal Caribbean. Arm floaties for kids are tolerated, but your best bet if traveling with kids is to take advantage of Royal Caribbean's complimentary swim vests. 
These are available on the pool deck and come in four sizes, infant, children, youth, and adult small. While floating devices outside of SwimVest are not allowed on board, you may be able to use them in the beaches or pools of your ports of call. Next up is probably the most common thing people bring on board a ship you're not allowed to, power strips. Cruise ship cabins, especially on the older ships, have very limited outlets. This leads many people to pack power strips in their luggage, but it's prohibited on a Royal Caribbean cruise because power strips with an extension cord are a fire hazard, and they'll be withheld from your luggage on embarkation day. Instead, you could pack a USB hub or outlet extender. Unlike power strips, these items are permitted on board and can drastically increase the amount of outlet availability in your cabin. A big no-no to bring on board is alcohol. Bringing alcohol on board your Royal Caribbean cruise is strictly prohibited, aside, of course, from the one 750 milliliter bottle of wine or champagne per adult in your cabin that Royal Caribbean does allow. Beer and spirits are prohibited, and sneaking liquor on your ship is not recommended. It's against the rules. If you can afford a cruise, you can afford the alcohol on board or drink on port. That's another way to save some money there. If you're hoping to save money on alcohol, by the way, here are another couple of options to save some cash. Number one, book a drink package early and reprice it as it often goes down. Number two, save money by drinking in port, as I talked about. Number three, ask for the drink of the day, which is usually a few dollars cheaper than other cocktails, and take advantage of bringing your own wine on board. But do not, under any circumstance, bring liquor on board. It's not worth the risk. Now, there are many more things you can't bring on a cruise, and there's a whole list of them here. Let's rattle them down. Firearms and ammunition. Sharp objects, illegal drugs and substances, CBD oil and products. By the way, just because it's legal in the U.S. doesn't mean it's legal where you're going, so you can't bring marijuana even if you have a prescription for it. Candles and incense, coffee makers, clothing irons and travel steamers, hot plates, hoverboards, martial arts, self-defense, and sports gear, flammable liquids and explosives, hookahs, ham radios, baby monitors, really, electrical extension cords, dangerous chemicals, perishable food and meat products, and alcoholic beverages, except permitted amount of wine, as we mentioned before. There you have it. The things you really shouldn't or can't bring on a Royal Caribbean cruise. Packing space is limited. Leave these items at home. Let me know in the comments below, were there any surprises on this list? And do you have any tips and tricks for anybody who's packing for a cruise on how to get around some of these things that you need legally, of course. We're just talking about alternatives to help make sure you have an awesome cruise vacation. Also, please do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and make sure you turn on notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know when we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCarbonblog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.